Hi! In today's quick tip, we're going to be thinking about the chain of sevenths. And it works like this. Take the bass note, C, go up a fourth to F, go down a fifth to B, go up a fourth to E, down a fifth to A, up a fourth to D, down a fifth to G, and up a fourth to C. So you get the idea, you start anywhere you like actually, in this case we're starting on C, you go up a fourth, down a fifth, up a fourth, down a fifth, for as long as you want to. And what you do is you decide which key you're in, so we'll work in C major today because there's no sharps, no flats to worry about, and what you're going to do is form a seventh chord on each of these notes. So this is C, so C7. So we're going to have this chord, C, E, G is the chord of C, we stick a B on the top, we've got a seventh. Then we move up to F in the bass and we give it another seventh. Then we go down to B and we form another seventh, up to E with another seventh and so on. A7, D7, G7 and then C7 or if you want to stop this chain of sevenths at that point you could just finish with a chord of C. Now, of course, that sounds a bit bold doing it like that, so I could get some of those notes into the right hand and I can reallocate the notes to suit. And sometimes it's quite handy if you do something like this. So if I get C7 and I've got it organised like that and I've got an E at the top, when I go to F7, I can keep the E at the top. Now, why does that work? Because E is part of C7, but E is also part of F7. So it gives you a bit of stability. Then when I go down to B7, I can move the top down to D. And then it will work again because when I go to E7, I can keep the D at the top. When I go down to A7, I can slip the top down to C. Then when I come to D7, I can keep the C again. When I go to G, I can move down to B and I can keep that B when I go on to C. So you see, quite often what happens is you can find a note that's common to this seventh and to that seventh, and you can repeat it somewhere. It doesn't have to be at the top, could be somewhere else in the texture. So you get a bit of stability moving between those chords. Now, you might wanna start by just getting familiar with how to do what we've done so far. But you can use this in any style. And this is the great thing about the chain of sevenths. It's been used for hundreds of years. So if you wanted to do it in a kind of 18th century Baroque style, you could use those chords. You could maybe thin the texture a little bit. So maybe you're just gonna work in three parts, a bass with two parts above it. And you can get a little bit of figuration into the texture like this. So using exactly the same pattern, I'm gonna do this in a Baroque style. So on, you can keep going as long as you want to. If I wanted to do it in a different style, I could, for example, think about a more kind of sort of cocktail piano style, I could take those as more as block chords. And you see, I'm doing exactly the same thing, but it's just working in a completely different style. The other thing, of course, you can do with this is you could decide that you're gonna use it to move to another key. So you could go from C to F, then you might decide you're gonna to go to B flat and then to E flat. So, you know, you could do something like starting in C7, then going to an F7, but then go to a B flat seven, and then an E flat seven. You might then want to go to an A flat seven, say, a D flat seven, a G flat seven, so on. But you could use it to modulate to different keys just by thinking, well, if I wanted to go to the key of G, well, I could go A seven and then a D seven with an F sharp in it that goes to G. So I go C seven, F seven, B seven, E seven, A seven. When I get to D seven, I put an F sharp in it and then I can go to G. So it also has that possibility 
for moving from one key to another. So I hope you have a bit of fun playing around with the recipe for the chain of sevenths and try using it in lots of different styles. See how you get on.